Welcome to Unit 21 Fed Now in 15 Minutes webinar. My name is Alex Fabusovic. I am the head of Fraud Risk here at Unit 21. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with Unit 21, we are an orchestration platform that uh, allows companies to ingest any type of data and use it for their transaction monitoring needs uh, to create a fraud prevention strategy. And we also provide a case management solution uh, and automation of SAR filing. A few items on the agenda today. So uh, we'll uh, start with some housekeeping and I'll do some uh, quick overview about Fed now. Uh, what is it, when it's happening, when it's set to launch? Uh, we will cover what type of participants uh, finance institution might actually uh, start with Fed now. Uh, I'll touch about cost, uh, or at least at what we can find from the Federal Reserve until, until now. Uh, I'll touch on the anatomy of the instant payments and uh, Finally, the basics of uh, how to fight fraud in real time. And in general, what we can expect from fraud uh, on, on, on this real-time payment rail. And we will finish with some uh, Q&A. And you will also see a poll right at the end of the webinar for you to answer. All right. so. Uh, Fed now. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm guessing that most of you probably heard of it uh, by now, but uh, it's pretty much very exciting because it's uh, the first time since uh, the 1970s that we have a new payment rail that's launching in the United States. Uh, I don't know about you. Uh, I'm excited or terrified. Oh, I, I haven't decided yet, but uh, basically, uh, Fed now is supposed to be really the ideal solution for uh, commercial accounts, for businesses. Uh, to transfer money from uh, one account to another. Uh, it will be immediate, it should be seamless. The processing and the clearing and the settlement should be uh, instant. And it really should allow businesses in the United States uh, operate much faster uh, and give them much more uh, financial freedom. Um, so in this quick presentation, which will only take 15 minutes, I will walk you through the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why and the how of Fed now. So let's get started. So topic number one, uh, what is FedNow and when it's happening? So uh, the FedNow service uh, is a real-time payment rail and it's introduced by the Federal Reserve, um, basically enabling uh, instant payments for businesses operating in the United States. Uh, it should be available for all uh, financial businesses of any size. Uh, so pretty much if you are a financial institution that have a banking license, you can uh, approach the Federal Reserve and ask uh, to join this program. Uh, but also uh, it will be applicable obviously for fintechs who work with, uh, with banks and uh, pretty much any other payment processor who would like to join. Uh, in, in general, real-time payment platform uh, FedNow will be 24, 7, 365, which means it will be available each and every single moment. Uh, if we look at what we have today, today we have uh, the ACH payment rail and we have the wire uh, rail. Both of them are uh, not real time. Both of them are not available all the time. For example, you can send uh, wires only on business days uh, and the clearing uh, part obviously also take uh, much longer and it's not real time, usually between two, three, maybe five business days depends. Uh, depends whether you're using ACH wire. So what's supposed to change with Fed now really is that everything is happening immediately. Uh, so the moment somebody sends a payment, uh, within a few seconds, uh, the counterparty who's supposed to receive the payment will receive a confirmation that the payment has, has been received. Uh, in terms of uh, what the platform should offer. So uh, according to what we see on the Federal uh, Reserve documentation, uh, Financial institutions should be uh, uh, should sh should have the the option to create a limit up to five hundred thousand dollars per transaction. Now the default would be uh, one hundred thousand for uh, most uh, businesses and most accounts. But if uh, there is a need, uh, you can uh, set much higher limit, so uh, half a million dollar dollar per, per single transaction. And uh, it will be using uh, the widely accepted uh, ISO. Uh, 20, uh, double zero 22. So uh, basically what we have until now is that the Federal Reserve uh, ran a pilot with about 
120 financial institutions. Uh, and that pilot covered the understanding of how to implement Fed now, how long this process takes, uh, how do the all readiness process for a financial institution look like, and uh, overall the feedback is very positive. And the Fed now uh, is expected to launch in July with about twenty-five to thirty percent of the participants of the pilot. So we are expecting anywhere between probably twenty-five, thirty, maybe forty financial institutions who will be fed now ready uh, in July. Now, in terms of use cases uh, where fed now can be actually applicable, I think business-to-business uh, -business payment will be probably uh, the biggest use case, at least at the beginning. But I also see uh, how fed now can impact uh, the payroll landscape, which will pretty much allow uh, businesses to send payroll to employees immediately rather than using the traditional ACA trail. Um, and I think at the, at the end of the day, consumers will also start benefiting from real-time payments. Uh, after we have much wider network of financial institution, I believe that the offering of FedNow will start to roll out for uh, consumers as well. Now let's cover topic number two, which are the participation types. So uh, the FedNow service will offer flexibility to choose almost any combination of participation types uh, within the solution to meet the business uh, needs requirements. And there's two uh, basic types of uh, participation. The first one will be uh, the financial institution can send and receive funds. So basically you can uh, allow your customers to send money on the FedNow uh, rail, but also accept it. And for financial institutions who want to start the rollout slowly, uh, they can choose to join just as a receiver. So basically, you will allow your customers to receive FedNow payments, but they won't be able to send out uh, payments. And if you choose the second option, uh, you will also allow to uh, obviously send RFPs, which is a request for payment. So basically, uh, ask other uh, financial institution on the FedNow network for a payment uh, for your customer. Now, in terms of cost, uh, what we see from uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, the cost is relatively not high comparing to what we see on uh, what, uh, what what is the being charged by by NACHA and what is being charged on the wire uh, payment rail. But it's pretty much twenty five dollars of a monthly fee service. Um, 0 0.045 uh, credit transfer fee, $1 liquidity management transfer fee, uh, 0 0.01 request for a payment fee, and 0 0.045 uh, return customer credit fee. And I want to remind you all that uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can submit them live and I will uh, do my best to answer those uh, right at the end of my presentation. Now let's move to topic number four. So basically, if you're not familiar with uh, real-time payments, the anatomy of a real-time payment is slightly different from what you might use to uh, with the wire over the ACH. Uh, it pretty much has uh, five different stages. So we have the initia initiation part is where the end user uh, will log into their banking platform, either web or mobile, uh, and they will, uh, initiate the payment. So let's say I want to send $10,000 uh, to uh, a friend of mine or to another business. So I will uh, log into my banking app, uh, set up the transaction, will put all the information identifying the recipient and uh, I will click send. At this point, uh, we transition into the authorization part. In the authorization part, uh, basically my bank, the issuing bank of the transaction will verify that I have actually uh, the funds to cover the transaction, the $10,000. And once they confirm, they will take the money out of my account and push the payment information to the recipient bank. Now, when we have real-time payments, uh, this is a critical point because since the moment that my bank authorized the payment, for me, as the end user, there is no way for me to stop. There is no way for me to say, hey, stop. Uh, you know what? I changed my mind. Uh, oh, I sent it by mistake. Or maybe I sent it to the wrong recipient. 
And this is critical. We will uh, circle back to it uh, when we start, uh, when we will be discussing uh, potential fraud issues uh, on, on real-time payments rails. But basically, once the, my bank authorized the payment, there's no way going back. Uh, the third uh, part will be the transmission, where the actual payments will move on the payment rail uh, to the uh, recipient uh, bank. And once the payment hit the recipient bank, we will see an acceptance. So basically an acceptance is the recipient uh, financial institution will uh, verify that, hey, okay, we have a certain amount of money from uh, coming from a specific bank, from a specific person or specific business, uh, and they will uh, notify the recipient that the payment is coming in. The final stage is the receipt. Should be a few moments later, uh, basically the money settles in the recipient account and uh, the recipient uh, financial institution sends a notification to the sender financial institution that uh, they have uh, received and settled the payment. And in order to support immediate uh, settlement, uh, I believe that uh, all Fed now uh, participants, all the financial institutions will have uh, their bank plugged directly into the master account at the Federal Reserve. So the actual transfers will be within the Federal Reserve from one bank account to another. Now let's cover topic number five, which is uh, the basics of fraud and instant payment. And if you heard any of my webinars or maybe my colleagues, we always used to say uh, that uh, faster payments uh, result in faster fraud. And since clearing and settlement uh, occur almost immediately uh, and the payment is pretty much irre irrevocable, uh, it minimizes the time and the power that you have as the sending uh, entity uh, to detect the fraud and actually capture it in real time. Now, uh, according to the uh, tech sheet that we uh, got from the Federal Reserve, uh, some optional fraud tools will be included uh, and part of them will be probably uh, creating some type of uh, blacklisting of recipients uh, because remember everything uh, is transmitted on the same ISO messages. So it should be very clear for everybody uh, to understand uh, how to read those uh, ISO, ISO structures and how to uh, basically take recipients who are uh, potentially can be bad and create blacklists for those recipients. But also uh, I, th I think uh, once we roll out uh, FedNow and once we actually see how this uh, payment rail works, uh, we will see financial institution really start in, start, starting into creating much more sophisticated um, fraud strategies. And I think uh, a few keys to success here is really, first of all, I think you want to have a proactive monitoring. So if you run any type of transaction monitoring that runs in batch, maybe you know twice a day, uh, best case every 30 minutes, maybe every 10 minutes, that's uh, not sufficient. You need to have a real-time solution that can uh, allow you to create some type of strategy and in real time give you a response whether or not you want uh, to allow the payment to leave uh, the bank. Um, but I also think that we will probably need to better understand how we treat uh, newly seen pays. Uh, and I believe one of the biggest uh, fraud um, scenarios that we'll see with Fed now will be pretty much uh, app fraud. So we will have a user who is tricked into send payments to a recipient that they're not supposed to send payment to. And basically once they do that, uh, there's no going back. So. If you know how to identify a newly seen PAE and you know how to blacklist PAE and you know how to maybe create a, a good friction if a login session or maybe the way the customer access their account is not the usual way, uh, there's a good chance you can have a sufficient uh, strategy uh, uh, to fight fraud on, the, on, on, on real time. But uh, it's... We, it, it will be very interesting. I think the first month will be definitely we will see cases of uh, business email compromise because if you think about it, uh, if if I'm as a fraudster, you know that hey, uh, I can uh, you know 
take over someone's account and uh, get them to send me five hundred thousand uh, dollars on Fed now and get it within within a few seconds, then I will probably try uh, to trick uh, somebody to send me money. We might even see more traditional account takeovers. We simply take take over someone else's account and just uh, you know fraudsters will uh, send the money by themselves instead of actually tricking the victim. But uh, definitely a lot of uh, uh, different interesting fraud cases we expecting to see in the next um, in the next five six months. So uh, the the last topic is pretty much how Unit Twenty One can help. Uh, and if you're not familiar with Unit Twenty One, we have a very flexible uh, rule engine that allow you to create uh, different type of rules. And we have a uh, real time solution. So basically, in uh, stub second response we can tell you whether or not based on your fraud strategy that you deploy with our rules, you should either accept or decline uh, a transaction. And basically you can decide whether or not you want to allow customers, uh, you want to allow the transaction to, to leave the bank. Um, besides that, we have a very flexible uh, case management. And I think if you going into uh, fighting fraud in real time, declining the transaction is it's, it's only the first step. You really need to have a, a very good journey for the customer to walk. Because uh, if you think about it, if I'm a business and I want to send, let's say, $100,000 that I own uh, one of my vendors, and I try to execute the transaction, but the bank declined me. Now I need to have a very good experience to understand what exactly is going on. So basically, okay, my transaction was declined. What happened next? Do I get a text message? Do I get a phone call? Uh, how the bank treats me as a customer, both from protecting me from not sending money to somebody I'm not supposed to send money to, but also making sure that if it is a false positive on their end, how they make it right. Uh, and I think this where uh, a good case management solution is comes into place because you decline the transaction, the alert is created, the agent, the agent can start handling the case. So how the agent will uh, reach out to the customer uh, if it's a false positive and we need to whitelist the customer and tell them, hey, okay, sir, uh, you know, we apologize for the inconvenience. You can go and try again and send the transaction. I will make sure it go through. So how do you whitelist those customers? Uh, it's a lot of different nuances in creating a good, uh, a good experience in, in real time, especially if, if you decline a large amount of, uh, of money. Uh, so, uh, we also offer a case management solution at unit 21. And, uh, if you are interested in a demo, uh, you will you will see a queue uh, on your screen right now, and you can choose uh, yes, and we will be happy to demo it for you. And now we will move to the Q and A part. So we had pre-submitted questions by uh, some of our listeners. So I will take those first, and then we'll see what questions we got here in real time. Give folks a moment to answer the poll. Okay, I think we can get started. So uh, question number one comes from uh, Dan. Will FedNow implementation uh, to pull request will be easier for banks to deploy than uh, RTP? So I, I think if, if I understand correctly, you talk about uh, the second type of participation uh, that I uh, mentioned. And yes, obviously if you are only uh, be on the side of requesting payments or receiving payments, uh, I believe uh, it's less complicated to implement. Uh, so yes, you definitely should expect a much easier implementation if you choose to participate with FedNow only as a recipient of payments. Um, second question is from uh, Crystal. Uh, what is uh, the clawback risk in FedNow? Uh, which I think it's a, it, it's a great question because uh, if you think about it, it, the payment was sent, once the payment is authorized by my bank and it was sent, 
uh, there is no way to, to return it. So yes, you can file a, a request to get the payment back, but nobody guarantees that the bank on the other side will actually do it or they actually have the money. I believe what, what we will see uh, once Fed now is launched is the money will move several different stage, stations in order uh, to make it much harder to take it back. So let's say if we, in the scenario of uh, app fraud, right? Uh, so, you know, the fraudsters manipulated the victim to send $100,000 to them. They receive the $100,000 and then they move it immediately to a safer account. And then they move it again to a safer account. And they will move it three, four, five times. So even by the time the fraud is discovered, uh, the money already moved five, four, five, six different stations, and it will be much more challenging uh, to actually go and trace it back. So I think uh, the risk is actually uh, pretty significant. Uh, question number three from Dana. When will Fed now begin? Will this end cash? So it's supposed to launch in July. Will it add cash? Uh, I, th I think it's, it's, it's early to say. Uh, obviously, there is a huge uh, need for uh, real-time payments in, in, in the commercial space, in, in sending money from one business to another. Uh, but those businesses not necessarily transacting in cash today um, because they usually either ACH or wire money to each other or write physical checks. I do think that once we have bigger adoption, what I hope to see is that we will see less uh, usage of uh, paper checks uh, and we will see as a result, less mobile check deposits, which are causing a lot of uh, financial problems to many financial institutions in the past two years, uh, pretty much post pandemic. So th this is my hope. I think uh, a lot of businesses, uh, for example, if they still use checks uh, for payroll, I think FedNow is a great alternative uh, to just send the money to your uh, to your employees, um, but we'll see. Uh, but I don't think it will end cash, at least not in, in not, not not in the short term. Um, let's see. Fourth question from uh, I hope I said the name correctly, Sveta. Uh, what do you see at the primary fraud vectors in Fed now, in particular, and possible controls uh, for those factors? So, uh, like I mentioned, I think. Uh, app fraud, uh, business symbol compromise, and more traditional uh, account takeovers. This will be the three vectors that we will probably see with Fed now. Um, it, it, and, and I think it will take some time for the banks, especially the early adopters, to figure out how to set up uh, the right controls. Uh, but if I circle back to what I mentioned earlier, I think you need a vendor that can give you a response, ideally sub-second, uh, whether or not to send the money out. Uh, it should be backed by a very flexible rule engine uh, because you don't want to create a lot of friction. You don't want to have a lot of false positives uh, when you're dealing with real-time payments. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it will be very interesting, let's say first 12 months. Now, let's see what we have here from the live Q&A. Uh, question from Paolo, can fintechs leverage the FedNow services or will be tied only to banks? Um, I think at the beginning, it will tie directly to a bank and banks who run fintech programs, it will be pretty much up to them. I believe to whether or not to enable it for the fintechs, uh, it will probably start rolling out in in the lower volumes and the slower capacity, but uh, I definitely see eventually fintechs uh, as part of, of, of the FedNow payment rail. And a question from Al. Is this a push-only solution like Venmo and Zale, or does this support pooling funds as well, like Nasha Files? So yeah, you can, you, you can send a request, uh, to pull funds, uh, and obviously you can push. So it's it's both directions. So 
So we have a question here. What are the benefits of FedNow versus RTP? Well, FedNow is RTP. Uh, RTP is a real-time payment. FedNow uh, is a real-time payment rail. What are some uh, main fraud or compliance concerns to focus uh, when we start with uh, receiving payments only? Uh, so yeah, compliance, I think we, we, we touched on fraud, but uh, didn't really touch compliance. Uh, well, if our SAR threshold is $10,000 and a single pay, a single transaction of Fed now is 100,000, uh, does it mean that each time we receive uh, $100,000 uh, on a Fed now, we need to file a SAR? Probably yes. Uh, something to consider, definitely. What are the difference? Uh, oh, here's a, here's a good question from Maurizio. What are the differences between Zale and Fed now? Uh, so, Zale is mostly focused for consumers. And the idea behind, behind Zale was uh, I will send money to my friends. Uh, we will share a restaurant bill. Uh, I can, you know, send money to my babysitter. Uh, so, the transactions are obviously not 100,000 or half a million, and they're much more limited. Uh, but basically, uh, they're similar in a way that uh, your bank needs to be on the network. So if your bank is working with Zelle, uh, you can send Zelle. Same will be with FedNow. If your bank's bank is part of the network, you will be able uh, to use it. But obviously, the biggest difference is uh, the transaction cap. Another question, will Fed now be available on Bank's mobile app as we see Zelle? Uh, well, I, ideally, I think yes, but it's pretty much uh, depends on, on the financial institution. They can choose to roll out at the beginning, maybe only for, uh, only for web and then roll out for mobile. They might start with mobile uh, off the bat. Uh, it's, it's, up to the, it's up to the banks. Question from Zhao. Uh, will recipients of Fed now have to provide consent upfront of receiving the funds, similarly to what happens in ACH? Um, so that's a, that's a good question. And uh, there's not a lot, a lot of documentation on that. Um, so uh, I don't really have an answer uh, that I can uh, clearly say if it will be the case like ACH. And I think we have time for one more. Let's see. What's the expected duration of the entire process from initiation to receipt? A few seconds. And what happens if a financial institution doesn't process instantly? So uh, like I said, because all the masters, master accounts will be on the Federal Reserve, uh, linked directly to the Federal Reserve, the money will move instantly. So yeah, I, I think we're talking anywhere between three to five seconds. And uh, there's no option not to process instantly. If you're part of that network and you say, okay, I'm, I'm accepting Fed now, um, you either accept the transaction or maybe you will have the, the option to decline it. Uh, and if you have the option to decline it, it will immediately send a message to the sender uh, financial institution that no, this payment, we don't want to accept it, uh, but that's, that's pretty much it. It should be immediate. So uh, I think uh, this is all uh, what we had for you today. Uh, as a reminder, uh, the session is uh, recorded and it will be on demand uh, version in the next uh, 24 hours. Uh, so you can always go to uh, unit21.ai and see uh, the webinar uh, recorded over there. Uh, and thank you for uh, joining me today. And I hope I was able to provide you some uh, good information about FedNow. Cheers.